Hello and welcome to this iMesh tutorial and today I'm going to show you how I made this weave and this weave was I posted it online and everyone was asking me how I did it so here's the tutorial. I'm kind of just going to walk you through the processes that I took in this blend file and you could just follow along and just see the process that I took because the actual process took about 10 hours of work so a 10 hour tutorial isn't ideal. So basically yeah you can see this weave it goes all the way around and I've tried as best as I can to make sure that every single part of the weave weaves into each other so that there's no like loose ends and I try to weave this base chair into into here nicely as well some places are a bit messy but you're never gonna see that from this distance the the object itself has such high level of detail that any imperfections I think just add to the realism anyway so I'm gonna show you how I did this so the first thing that I did was so this is my working layer, I could probably have tidied this up a bit, but the first thing that I did was get the plans from the actual chair itself from the manufacturer, and then I tried to make the product first, like kind of the base model, and then I worked from there. So let me just remove this for now. So this is what I work with. I just added some plane, planes, and then I added a solidify, and then bevel, and the bevel is what gave it that smooth and then a rounded corner and as it was the same all the way around it was just easier just to add the plane and solidify it and then a mirror obviously so yeah once that was done I had to then apply the solidify and unwrap it unwrapping was a bit difficult I, try, I had to try and look at the actual product itself and see how the weave went, ar went around the product so if I go to texture view here I applied a weave texture which was the same style of weave as the actual product so that I could try to get my head around how everything goes so in the actual product the weave goes duh, 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 and then it was at th about this point where the weave started to go round at a 45 degree angle so that's why I added the UV cuts here the next thing to do was to try to align the weaves as best as possible so if I go into the UV editor again and just like, oh, what was it called? I think I just got it from textures.com as just a kind of a reference and then I went into the UV mode and selected a face select and selected each face individually then I made sure I was in um, this mode proportional editing and then I could move it around and try to align them as best as I, as I could so kind of something like that I guess so that kind of the weaves were consistent all the way around I guess I could have spent more time doing that but it wasn't kind of relevant it, you kind of just had to make it as best as possible and you kind of just fix that a bit later when you actually add the physical weave so this weave kind of goes like this around the product and that's why it goes at a 45 degree angle here so once you've done that the next idea is to use this add-on here it's not called 3d print tools I don't think it's called actually UV shape and it I think if you Google uh, create UV shape, it will then do this basically. Uh, for some reason, it's not working right now, but I do have one which is working, which I previously clicked that button, this one here. So let me just go back to where it was. So this was the product. Oh, sorry. Let me just uh, one second bring this over here. So this was wh how it was before. And then what I did was select all of the so just like this, select the uh, seams, turn off proportional editing, and then press V. And that what that does is it then separates all the separate parts. And once you've done that, you then click, I think these two buttons, that's why I did and it seemed to work, but I don't know what's not working now. And then you click create UV shape. And what that does is it creates a UV shape key, which flattens the model to the UVs. And as we had, let me just hide this, as we had then aligned all the weave correctly now the idea was to add the physical weave over the top of this and then attach that weave to this model and then bring it back into this shape if you follow so let me put like this like this and then get the weave that I was actually working with so for example this one and if you want to know how you go how you center an object that you have selected you just press the the dot the full stop under the number pad and it brings you into that model sorry yeah anyway so 
this weave here is basically just this little patch here which is a set to array many many times and I've tried to keep it as low poly as possible because as you can imagine later down the line the poly count increases very quickly the one thing to kind of note here is that make sure that these edges align as best as you can otherwise you have some edges which will then because you have to set this to merge you might have some edges which will instead of merging to this piece coming in here it might merge onto the piece just below it so if I do this like if I get it close enough to the other one you can see at some point it kind of might merge to the wrong piece so just kind of make sure that the every single edge is aligning to the correct edge on the array right so then once you've done that I have here array array and some solidify and all these so I can turn these off these are kind of unimportant right now as they just add to the poly count but you can see that this is a nice little weave I think next time the weave on the product was actually a, quite a bit thinner maybe half as thin as the weave that I had added previously so I'd probably at this stage make the weave just a bit thinner and then add the solidify and bevel and subsurface a bit later on so at this stage what you'd want to do is just apply the array and the other array and now you have this whole thing and next thing I want to do is just kind of clean up the edges so I go to face select and just try to get, get as close as possible to this this edge it doesn't matter if you so you can kind of see the edge underneath of the of the uh, what I want it to align to it doesn't matter if you cut more which go over the line this way that's kind of fine I, I think it's better to cut off more than less because that if you have <laughs> for me what I found was if I had too much on the other side on the outside it created more issues it was harder for me to try and merge the weaves and stuff so I'd much prefer to do you know, to go over them if I had to maybe not that much Blah. and sorry yeah anyway I'll just do this quick and dirty just so you can see now so if you want to know what I'm pressing I'm pressing C and that creates this circle and you just do this and you right click when you're finished so let me just do this blah 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 and there we go right, let me just get rid of this too I just want to probably remove this. If you hold down shift, sorry, you can remove it or middle mouse button. So if you press the middle mouse button, it deletes it. Right, and then just press X and delete faces. And for some reason, I ended up having these all the time. So I just pressed on edge mode, shift G and, sorry, X. And then, oh no, sorry, yeah. So shift G and amount of faces around edge. And it selects all of the edges which don't have more faces next to them. And press delete and then edges they were just kind of unnecessary leftovers right so we now we have the weave and we have the thing underneath so how we want to attach this weave to this model underneath is under here add modifier and surface deform there is actually this add-on here which does it too but I found that this one that's within blender already works very very well so just click target and select the plane underneath the one which we have the UV shape key to and go back to the weave and click bind right now if I select the original shape and bring the shape key back down you can see now that the weave is conforming to the to the shape of the product so if I press hide now we have a weave so if I then turn back on sorry uh, this should be up here at the top and then apply the solidify and bevel and subsurface that you can now see that the weave now has some thickness so as you'd imagine it's just easier to have these turned off and only work with the flat plane because this is kind of destructive here at this stage anyway so just click uh, apply and the next idea is to go around the model and make sure that all of these edges that are left over are kind of attached together so I think actually at this point I would turn this on because it's easier to see which piece lines to which and so you can see here this is a a weave which is going horizontal and I think this this one is weave that's going horizontal so I press these two and just to bridge edge loops and click merge and then I'll go down again to the next one I think it's this one here and bridge edge loops merge and you basically just need to do this all the way down the model so if there are any 
basically any edges which are for the weave itself and they look like they should continue then just merge them together you basically go all the way down the model and then all the way up this is where it starts getting a bit tricky you kind of just have to make it up as you go along and try to make sure that these kind of oops um, align as best as you can and cross over and weave if some don't quite go as you kind of want them to you can add add faces so maybe just do something like this and try to bring it down to make it look like it was yeah like this just try and tuck it un underneath I think in this case it probably actually go over this one and you can kind of then add this one like this you get the idea basically just trying to make the weave if you're missing some it gets a bit tricky as you'd imagine when you then have oh sorry I've just completely oh okay uh, if I was then to obviously do the same for every single edge so oh, I think I've done it here already yeah, so if I do this, oh, sorry, let me bind this first. Bind, this is one I've done previously. Right, if then go into here and hide this. So you can see where these edges, oh, sorry, let me apply this. Whoop, apply. Yeah, so now you can see why it's important when you are trying to align the UVs that, it's, that the weave is going in the correct direction and try to align as best as you can. Here, you can see this weave is going across here and then it jumps because I don't think I did maybe a, as good enough job as I should have done so yeah it's at this point where it gets tricky and then also underneath you just try to have to make these uh, weave as best as possible and let me if I go to my final model and see how I did that in the end so this one sorry Yeah, so you can kind of see how I try to make that work, how some weaves are going like this. As I said, you would never look under this under a model in architectural visualization. You probably look at it like this, and that's where it looks best, I think. So, yeah, once you've done as best as you can with this piece, the next part was to then move on to the back section, which I basically did the same thing for, which is this, and I separated it, and flattened it and then applied another weave to it. This one was a lot more difficult because it's a round edge. Here is a lot more square and it kind of just worked a lot better but this kind of was a bit more of a difficult shape to work with for some reason. And this looks a bit messy but when I actually looked at the model itself in real life, the actual product, the weave actually looked pretty similar to this so I wasn't too unhappy with that. And yeah, so now for the base section where you sit down, there's kind of missing a section here. This is pretty much the exact same weave as before, but what I've done is... So so what I basically did was get this weave, uh, and I just uh, got another one next to it as a reference, and then I got this piece, and I brought this down. If I press Shift and Tab, I've set it to align to closest vertice, and if I press G and Y, you can align it to this vertex and now this is well a bit messy right now but this is pretty much exactly one width apart and I did the next one again GY and move it to the next one oh sorry let me just do this really quick yeah like this and then I stretch these out um, pretty much like this to make sure that the weave then aligned so you, you get that dip oh, that looks really messy but it basically <laughs> It's the same weave just spaced out like this to leave a square underneath. And I pretty much did the same thing. So I created a plane and added the texture to it and made sure that the texture aligned to this physical weave that I'd already made as best as I could and then applied the weave on top. And then the next part was just to go all the way around the edge and try to, as best as you can again, just try to weave this into the actual product. That's quite a tricky part too. This piece was also super tricky. We tried to make this oop, this weave go from this part of the object into this piece, and it kind of goes all the way around. And then there's this piece, and that's just the, that's just the time-consuming part of this model. But that's pretty much the process that I took. Um, as I said, I think this weave is a bit too strong right now, a bit too thick. Sorry, and I'd probably make it a bit thinner. But for 
for the purposes of this model. And my first weave, I think that it's a pretty close representation of what I wanted. So yeah, I'm probably gonna go. I'm probably gonna go weave crazy now and apply weaves to everything because now I know how to do it. But I think that it, it ends up looking like a pretty realistic model. And actually, I've actually started a simulation with this. So if I show you, if I open animation, because every single part of the model was its own piece, I could then apply a cloth simulator to it and <laughs> and make the model fall to pieces. So if you do this, now the model is like falling all over the place and flying around in a circle. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's quite cool when it goes back into the shape of the object. Bing. Okay. Yeah, so lots of fun. I had lots of fun and I hope that this tutorial was coherent enough. If you want me to go into more detail in any part of this, then do let me know. I kind of breezed over it because I kind of want to step away from this project for a bit because it took me so long. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Um, if you're looking for anything else from iMesh or tutorials or anything, let me know and I'll try to create it as quickly as possible for you. <laughs> Thank you very much.